Uh, please welcome Governor Ed Rendell. Ed. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You know, I, 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 I'm going to get to the meat of what I want to talk to you about in a second, but I've got to tell a story about Leo, because I think Leo is the most enlightened, and I don't know we've got a lot of great labor leaders here, but I think Leo is the most enlightened and best labor leader in the country, but there's always a but. It hasn't always been sweetness and light with me and Leo. When I ran for governor in 2002 in the Democratic primary, he supported my opponent. That was okay. My opponent is Bob Casey, who became a very fine United States Senator. And uh, that was all right, and I won the primary. So I made a pilgrimage to Pittsburgh to see Leo. And you know, I was gonna say, look, I understand you supported my opponent. He had excellent labor credentials, but now it's time to get on board. And I had been the Democratic National Chairman in 2000. So I walk in, and the first thing Leo says to me is, so you, so you used to be Al Gore's bag man. <laughs> well, our relationship went steadily uphill from there, and it's an honor to be introduced by Leo. Again, he's creative, he's innovative. What his union has done with the leading U.S. steelmakers is something that's not, uh, uh, should be replicated all around the country. They have formed into a tremendous team that fights in Harrisburg, in, 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 in Springfield, in all the state capitals, and in Washington, D.C., for the interests of the men and women working uh, in the steel industry. And they've done a great job on trade, on tariffs, on the rebirth of American manufacturing. They've become a powerful force. And when politicians see labor leaders and business leaders walking in lockstep, it's very impressive. And Leo's done a great job. I also want to take note, I don't know if they're here today, but some time during the conference, you were joined by a number of students from West Philadelphia High School. And we take, uh, uh, I can't see, the lights are so strong, I can't see. No, sit for a second. I'm going to ask you to stand up in a second. These students are here for a reason. It's good for all students to see what we're trying to accomplish here, but they're here for a reason. They're part of the Automotive and Mechanical Engineering Academy within West Philly High. And in 2002, their forerunners designed and built a car that won first place in the National Tour de Sol, which is a contest in which competitors must develop an alternative fuel vehicle. It wasn't a fluke. In 2005, this program at West Philly High won again. And last year, they entered the $10 million Progressive Insurance Automotive X Prize contest. And their goal there, the goal of the contest, was to see who could build an affordable car that gets 100 miles per gallon and can be mass produced. Our students from West Philly High made the first cut. They cut down to 43. In the first cut are teams from Cornell University, Tesla Motors, and Tata Motors. West Philly was the only high school in the final cut. Now you can stand up and be recognized. And not, and not to totally digress, but what these kids are doing is so important. Because STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is so important to this country if we're going to remain competitive, competitive in any field. And by the way, don't think that we have the development of green energy jobs to ourselves. Every country in the world is racing to develop the technology first. And the way we're going to keep our edge is if we make our educational system work, if we make science, technology, engineering, mathematics attractive to young people if we start at the very earliest age in elementary school to motivate that type of uh, innovation and that type of spirit. And we've got to do it. And these kids are great, great examples for us. Now, I'd like to begin by thanking David and the Blue-Green Alliance for what you've done. It's been an incredible alliance <coughs> that has focused and built partnerships between labor unions and environmental organizations. To sectors of our society who you wouldn't have thought 20 years ago would coalesce behind any idea or any concept. 
This coalition has been extraordinary, and it works. I'll give you an example. Six years ago, a wonderful secretary of the Department of Environmental Protection, Katie McGinty, she came to me and said, Governor, I think we can bring the world's second largest vertical wind energy company to Pennsylvania. Its name is Gamesa. It's a Spanish company. And they want to make a major investment here. I met with the executives. We put together an economic development deal. And Gamesa indeed came to Pennsylvania. They set up two manufacturing plants in Pennsylvania, one in Bucks County and one in Johnstown. Um, they also built a distribution network, a sales force, and created over 800 jobs in Pennsylvania, building the big blades and the nacelles that are necessary for wind energy. This was, of course, a win-win proposition for the steel workers. Number one, they asked me what was the, one of the most innovative unions in the state because they were willing to be unionized, and I introduced them to Leo, and the steel workers represent their manufacturing employees. But two, those wind turbines, and, and you've seen them, they contain, one wind turbine contains 250 tons of steel. And most of that steel is coming from Pennsylvania and from American steel manufacturers. Now, the, absolutely. The, the really tail end of the story is Gamesa invested $220 million in Pennsylvania, created nearly 1,000 jobs, and so there are a large contingent of steel workers who are involved in shaping the clean energy economy. And the best thing, from a human interest standpoint, is that location in Bucks County is what we call an industrial park, a Keystone Opportunity Zone industrial park. It's owned by U.S. Steel, and it used to be the Fairless Hills Steel Production Center, one of the largest in the world. It closed down about a decade ago. When Gamesa opened up its manufacturing at the Fairless Hill site, many of the workers were workers who had been employed at Fairless Hills less than a decade before. So it's a great story. It's a great story of success. And it's been replicated in Pennsylvania over and over again. We've brought countries that are ahead of the curve, ahead of us, into Pennsylvania, from Spain, from Greece, from Korea, from England companies that are well known in the clean energy economy that are now producing and manufacturing in America. But it didn't happen by accident. Pennsylvania has been committed since I've become governor to developing the green energy economy. The state has invested over one billion dollars in incentivizing and laying the groundwork and helping build the infrastructure for the green energy economy. That's paid off for us in five billion dollars of private sector investment We've created over 8,300 new jobs solely in the green energy economy. Um, and uh, it is uh, no accident that this has happened. And a year and a half ago, we passed a new energy in, uh, initiative, an energy investment initiative, that created another $650 million, $400 million of which was to continue to motivate the development of these companies. Now, we've gotten some help from the federal government and the Obama administration. You know, there's a lot of talk about the stimulus. Was it good? Was it bad? There were many parts of the stimulus bill that were awfully good and it helped us in so many ways. One of the things that the president did was he was also far-reaching in the stimulus bill and there was significant money for the production of green energy jobs. Pennsylvania received $102 million of additional federal stimulus money, which we've used to support 155 alternative energy projects in every corner of our state. So far, those projects, and remember, this is just fairly new, so far those projects have produced 700 new additional green energy jobs and attracted more than $385 million in private sector investments. As a result of all this, Pennsylvania, in a study released by the Pew Center for the States, ranks third in the production of green energy jobs behind only Texas and California.